Hi, I'm Eric Prostowski. Welcome to a new segment of EP on EP. It's a delight to have with me someone I've known for decades, Dr. Wee Nadamani, who is currently Professor of Medicine at Chula University in Thailand. Wee, thanks for joining the show. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a great honor. Well, you're, you're yeah. so kind to say so. Um, we, we're going to talk today about your pioneering work in ablation in Brugada. Um, when we all started thinking about Brugada, you know, the prevailing opinion was this was a uh, reentrant, uh, you know, uh, arrhythmia, like phase two reentry. Um, at some point, you said, I don't think so. So, why don't you give the, the audience at least some background before we get into the procedure of how you came to that? Okay. Well, after a decade of depolarization theory as a prevailing mechanism, um, there was a patient uh, in Europe uh, from Pedro Bugada laboratory that had electrical storm and, uh, and needed a heart transplant because of that, because there was no other treatment. And they sent the explanted heart to Amsterdam Medical Center, and the work of that group led by Ruben Colonel uh, did the total heart mapping, and they, as you know, they're well known on that. Yes. And uh, so they found no repolarization abnormality. Instead, they found depolarization. And um, fibrosis, I'm guessing. Uh, that's all fibrosis. So yes. fibrosis. That's all okay. fibrosis. That was the first time that was really clearly documented. Okay. Um, that's only one case, and then subsequently there has a, there was another case. But anyway, there started a controversy or a debate between depolarization and repolarization. Obviously, the Amsterdam, uh, Lubin, um, Jack de Barker, and all that starting depolarization theory. Right. Like, but I, when I saw that, I, and regardless of depolarization or repolarization, everybody agrees that the RVOT was a site. Okay. It's a site that that's a subject must be, regardless of okay. theory. So I got lucky in a way that uh, once, uh, that uh, when one time we, I was in Bangkok, uh, in a, uh, there was a patient who had an electrical storm. And you know, instead of sending him to a heart transplant, we just have to do something. Oh. Uh, we didn't have quinidine, and we and the patient failed everything. So, so I took a patient into the lab. Uh, we have the emergency IRB approval and all that, and we went using salsa technique. And when I put the catheter into the RVOT, and lo and behold, we saw fractionated electrograms, mm. and 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 uh, and when we ablated. We normalize the uh, Bukata ECG pattern, prevent the recurrence of VF, and could not, uh, we couldn't even deal with VF afterward. So, I can I <laughs> stop you there? Um, with fibrosis, I'm guessing, I mean, did you try to see if before doing all that you could actually induce an arrhythmia, or did you leave it alone and just ablate? No, actually, uh, that patient. The patient only had spontaneous VF. Okay. But also we did the VT induction because at the time uh, to set up the protocol to get the IRB approval, we have to set up the criteria. Okay. So, so we, we, one of the criteria is to normalize if we can or uh, prevent in inducibility. That okay. patient, so we did a v v VT induction and we induced VF basically. And after the ablation, the patient, uh, did not, uh, we could not reinduce. So you, you did, I assume, you just ablated the entire area where you thought there was uh, and that patient, potentials? I, that patient, I couldn't say that I did the entire area. <laughs> okay, okay, I must be honest. Yeah. Because uh, I was so excited and then we saw that. So I bled, <laughs> um, the, because the extent of the ablation of that patient is not, it was not the same as, I, I, as I'm doing, doing it now. now. Yeah, exactly. So okay. it must have been unbelievable to see the Bugatti pattern disappear. Oh God! It, it must have been uh, a moment, right? I, and Eric, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm really slow writer. My, my <laughs> former, my former uh, mentor so always said, "I'm promising fellow, but never, just promise, never do anything." But anyway, I it was tempting to write a case report, but I was so afraid that it was a fluke. Yeah. So I waited until eight patient, and then you wrote uh, it, and then wrote it, and then the published in circulation. That you know. So can I stop you for a second? Because if I go back in era, I I remember when now I didn't start WPW surgery at all. Obviously, I came in later, but I trained at Duke with uh, Will yeah. Seely and yeah. John Gallagher, 
And I remember the first time as a trainee going in and watching him cut a pathway and the delta wave goes away, and it's a moment, right? Right. I mean, so uh, you were the innovator, though, in this one. I mean, it must have been, I can imagine, so exciting because it, it really did two things at once. I mean, you cured the patient of their terrible arrhythmia, and at the same time, the substrate you ablated took away the Bugatta ECG pattern. Right. Though you don't, it had All to All those get, theories of why you <laughs> had Bugatta ECG pattern sort of melted away, right? Well, not really. Uh, uh, the the repolarization sites still have a lot of doubt, and then uh, yeah. and there's, uh, and in the West population, Charlie said, well, we could see the fractionated signal also. Okay. But anyway, so, but, but, Later on, we had an opportunity uh, that came upon us because we could not, in some patients, we could not gain an access into the pericardium. Okay. And uh, percutaneously. So we elected to take the patient to the lab because the patient had multiple uh, VF uh, 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 okay. uh, lab episodes. Lab surgery. 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 Uh, I'm sorry, okay. surgery. Oh, and then we have some patient who infected uh, leads that we need to explant it. Okay. I took the patient to the uh, to, to 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 the OR, and the surgeon did the mini mini thoracotomy, and we did the uh, mapping in the RV, just like the WPW that you right. we we use a catheter and uh, electrode, and then we just go we create the grid over the CT right. of the heart, right? And we 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 found fractionated signal. We we did a biopsy before we ablate. And it was fibrosis? And then the fibrosis. That's great. That's the, really great. the fibrosis is typical for the Bucata was the epicardial fibrosis and interstitial fibrosis. Right. And that explains, as you know, when you see right. fractionated signal, right. you know, the exactly. work, you know, is the six sucking uh, impulse. You know. Yes. And then this, at the same time, Dr. Uh, Professor Aki Akihiko Nokami in Japan yes. uh, also found the same thing. Same thing? So the same thing. So we did combine and, and then... And at that time, we also joined with the St. George uh, University in London mm -hmm. with uh, Professor uh, Raja Bay and his team. Yes. They did uh, the study in the uh, sudden death victim that have family, uh, Bukata family history. Mm -hmm. And they also found fibrosis, inc fibrosis increased collagen. It's and also yes. when they did the immunohistochemistry to look at the connection 43, they found the Found yeah. a problem. problem. So let me take you back to, I don't know if you were in this era with signal averaging started. There were some early reports of positive signal averaging late potentials in Brugada patients that was there. And people were like, is that a, just an error of the technique that, you know, you know, but actually that was probably all. Absolutely. You got it, you hit it like an nail. Yeah. yeah, it was there. Yeah. But, but <laughs> that, that is funny because I think I was one of the, you know, well, because I, the repolarization from the West population was very, very um, uh, impressive. Yeah. Present. So when you see the signal average, we think, well, the, you know, may not be real, you know, things yeah, like that. Oh, that's yeah, exactly, exactly right. Exactly. People question it. Very, very can. So wonderful start of this discussion. Let's take it to like now. So which patients do you decide to do an epicardioblation on with Bugatta? How do you figure out who to date? Uh, definitely the patient uh, who has uh, recurrent VF and has uh, ICD discharges. Okay. Uh, that patient should be treated. Okay. Uh, for, for very simple reason, there is, there is no other treatment. Right. Uh, because ICD doesn't prevent VF. Right. Quinidine may prevent we have, but it's not available. So, so let's I'm, I'm oh. actually worldwide now is it's not available. Yeah, I find that amazing. We still fortunately have it, you know. But in the even United in States. the U.S., when I when it's I hard to get at times. Exactly. And not only that, I'll tell you something which you'll be amazed at because you and I did start also grow up in a drug era. Yeah. Um, that I sent a patient at the hospital to start quinidine, and one of my younger EP uh, partners uh, called me and said, "Well, like, how do I do that?" So uh, even if it's available, it hasn't been used by most people. Yeah. So let's take you procedurally then. So you, what is your endpoint when you're in there? Do you use procainamide? I mean, what what is, do you have to get rid of the uh, Bugatta pattern? What do you use as an endpoint? Absolutely. Uh, the endpoint now is the fractionated, mapping all the area of fractionated electrocrat. Okay. When we did first published in circulation of egg patient, I make one conclusion 
which had to be corrected later on. And that conclusion was that the, the abnormal substrate that ex exhibited uh, fractionated electrogram was exclusively in the RVOT, but at the epicardium. Okay. But as it turned out, not true. Oh, really? Because okay. later on, when we, when we used, for, for in, in Thailand, we used uh, uh, asmalin. And we could see now the substrate is, is also extended to the RV body. Okay. And in some, about 29%, also in the inferior wall. So that's where I think in the US we'd probably use procainamide for yeah, that reason. Right. And then you ablate those areas also. Absolutely. And then the end point now is to eliminate all the uh, uh, area that, that show fraction at the lithogram with the, with, uh, after the uh, uh, sodium channel blockade. Yes. Right, and, and has your experience been when you do that, the Bugatti pattern is gone? Right. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what's the follow-up? Uh, how many people who you do that and you get it done will have no more arrhythmias? Well, here, this a, we, I, I just finished analyzing and writing it up right now. We have the richest... Uh oh, uh, do you want me not to ask no, you? No, no, I can, I can <laughs> mention because I presented okay. an ab as abstract. Somewhere. Oh, okay. But uh, I just so that the, um, the viewer could, could, could uh, appreciate the result. We have 159 patients from the multi, multi sites from Europe, okay. uh, US, and also from, from Asia, mostly from Asia. And just in a nutshell, we found that patient in whom we can normalize the ECG pattern, yeah. that, is a, that is only a predictor okay. of no recurrent VF. And, and is it like 100% prediction well, or close? Uh, in this data, almost 100%. That's unbelievable. We have one patient, it's 98%, we have only one patient that, um, that uh, had recurrent uh, VF1, uh, that patient had also concomitant early depolarization oh, syndrome. Okay. So, so yeah, I, have to, I yeah. have to tell the, the, uh, the viewer also that, uh, especially in Southeast Asia, Bukhara syndrome commonly had combined syndrome about okay. 20 to 30 percent. I got you. Yeah, so, that, that, so if you have pure Bukhara syndrome without concomitant early lipo, if you uh, uh, They're going to have a that, great follow-up. Uh, yeah. We, pioneering work, so important to patient care. Thank you for your hard work thank, and thank thanks you. for joining us today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you.